You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle, and today we're streaming live at KEXP.org. I'm Cheryl Waters, and I am surrounded by some incredibly talented musicians today. Right here to my right is John Doe. I've got Bill Frizzell, Gerald Collier, and they've brought some incredible musicians to play with them. Today they're playing songs of Woody Guthrie. It is the 75th anniversary of Woody Guthrie being commissioned to songwrite for the Bonneville Power Administration way back in 1941. And there's a whole slew of great Woody Guthrie-inspired things going on around town to celebrate this anniversary. And today we're going to be listening to songs of Woody Guthrie in advance of a show tomorrow night at Benaroya Hall featuring these musicians and more. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But Gerald Collier, you're no stranger to the KEXP airwaves, and it's so wonderful to see you. Good to see you, too. It's been a long time. And you're going to start us out. Do you want to introduce your accompanying musicians? Sure. This is my good friend Alec on uh, mandolin here, my buddy Mark Wooten, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, on bass, and Cubby Casual, who is a, a right-on celebrity here in town. And would you like to uh, talk about the song you're going to play? It? Tell us well, this one, this one was one that uh, actually it was chosen for me by my friend Robin because I didn't know what songs to do. I was just kind of like, there's so many of them. And she was just like, okay, I'm just going to email you a few titles and you're going to do three of them. And this one, It Takes a Married Man to Sing a Word song was right up my alley. And so I uh, read the lyrics and stuff and it was horrifying. And I was like, yeah, we're doing that. All right, Gerald Collier live on KEXP. Well, you single boys can ramble, you single boys can roam, but it takes a married man to sing a worried song. I'm a married man And I sing a worried song I once used to ramble And I sang my single song Now that I'm married, boys I had to change my tune I'm a married man I sing a worried song yeah, I was rough and I was rowdy When I led my single life But I gotta take it easy now You see I got myself a wife And I'm a married man And I sing a worried song Six little children to feed and educate And it's really got me thinking I got not a nickel on my plate I'm a married man And I sing a worried song I got to save my dough We have six little children And we're expecting several more Yes, I'm a married man And I sing a worried song the door. Yes, I'm a married man, and I sing a worried song.
when you get yourself a wife Yes, I'm a married man And I sing a worried song You'll have flocks of little children You'll have others coming on And it'll take a married man To sing your worried song Yes, I'm a married man I sing a worried song Yes, I'm a married man And I sing a worried song I'm a married man That was wonderful. Gerald Collier live on KEXP. We're streaming video today live at KEXP.org. A great rendition of that Woody Guthrie tune. Sounds like you could have written that. <laughs> That's very much in your style oh, yeah. of oh. music. That's a compliment. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Bill Frizzell to our audience. John Doe is here. And Bill, would you like to introduce your guest today as well? Yeah, this is Luke Bergman here on... Uh Guitar. I guess it's a guitar, right? <laughs> kind of, kind of low. It's made out of a whiskey barrel. So, before you start playing, I'd love to speak about Woody Guthrie a little bit and what um, his music means to all of you. Obviously, um, such a huge impact. And any of you can speak up here, but I don't think uh, anybody alive today hasn't been touched by Woody Guthrie's music in some way. And uh, most everyone I know is a fan. I can't speak for everyone, but certainly he's touched a lot of people's lives. And he really wrote music for the common man and people he could really relate to. And Bill, especially, I know you've covered a lot of music. And I'm wondering what this you know, this music means to you. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's such a long, when I think of, if, if, when I was young, there was Davy Crockett and Superman and Woody Guthrie. I didn't know, I didn't even know he was a real person, you know, I think. And then when I was probably in elementary school, we all sang, this land is your land. And I, I came to know him very slowly over my lifetime. So, and actually probably more through hearing Bob Dylan and then you start hearing people referring to him and then gradually he became a real person. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, at the beginning it was more, I didn't even know if he was real or not, you know. So he's becoming more and more real. I mean, he is a folk hero, and one of the amazing things about an artist who reaches his stature is that people of all ages are impacted by him, and yeah. he, it, it goes on a wide spectrum, and you discover him at different points in your life, I think. And it's so relevant. It just, it just continues to be every, so much of what he talked about is... You know, it could, it's right now. <laughs> yeah, not much is, yeah, I mean, it, it could all be touched very easily right now. I mean, let's face it, that atmosphere, that atmosphere could very easily come back if it's not already here. I mean, that's, it, that was some trying times, and who knows, man, you know, we're never far away from it. I, I would also add that there's, uh, there's a lot of his lyrics that are still being made into songs. Yeah, I think there's right. a. I think Nora Guthrie's got a project going <clears throat> right now where she's, I forget who is, was given to, but somebody is going to write more Woody Guthrie songs. I feel with, I feel the same way. I heard about that, but I can't even yeah, remember I, I, the whole I story. I, I saw her at South by Southwest, and she said that <clears throat> she. Um, Maybe Billy Bragg again? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But, but, but didn't Lucinda get like one? That. I thought Lucinda got one, too, maybe. Could, I know Del McCurry just did Del McCurry a, did I one. I saw a record of his, I Oh, think. yeah, that's, that's awesome. It's really great. Yeah, it's called uh, Woody and Del or Del and Woody or something like that. Ah, yeah. oh, terrific. But, um, yeah, it's, it's still, it's, it's amazing. And, and, sh and I guess he would, Woody Guthrie would get a, one of those composition books and just start writing and then just sit down and write all the way through it. From beginning just, to end, you know, w within a few days, which is frightening I, and yeah, I just can't even imagine. Can makes you, I mean, me jealous. Sitting down and doing else, that. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's so appropriate that we don't even know all the projects that are going on with this massive amount of music, which makes me um, want to ask, I have been familiar with Woody for most of my life. I mean, I heard his music early and still continue to play it on KXP all the time, but it was only recently that I was actually familiar with this Bonneville Power Administration project where he was doing music about my own area mm -hmm. the, here on the Columbia River. How, how did you all become familiar with this project? I'm so excited to be hearing so much about it right now. And Greg Vandy, one of our KEXP hosts, just wrote a book about it. Yeah. And uh, it's exciting to learn that he was writing specifically about this area. Are you have, are you f familiar with that? Is that something you'd known about for a while? Just the just some of the songs. You know, I, I knew the Grand Coulee Dam and Pastures of Plenty and a few like that, but I didn't actually realize until someone called up and said, <clears throat> "Hey, do you want to be part of this thing?" That he'd written what twenty six songs in thirty in thirty days. Yeah, yeah. go figure. Ready, yeah, go. Yeah. Ready, go. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Well, it's yeah. so incredible because he was actually commissioned and it was a 30-day project. I think yeah. it was through May through June in 1941. And as you said, he just probably filled some composition book for that period. Well, Billy, you're, what are you going to play for us? You're going to play a couple of tunes. Uh, yeah. Well, this is, it's a little odd, you know, playing the, the, his songs are so much about the words and we're, we're <laughs> so I, I guess I'm sort of hearing little snippets of the words in my head. And also he would use so many of his songs, he would lift a melody from something that he had heard before. So we're going to play Ramblin' Around, which actually, that tune is from, I believe, Goodnight Irene, Lead Belly. But then who knows where Lead Belly got it. So, you know, it just keeps going back and back and back. And then we were going to do a version of Pastures of Plenty. <laughs> uh, that's what we're going to do. All right. And it's, but just with our guitarist, Luke and I. That's wonderful. We're streaming live at kexp.org.
Bill Frizzell live on KEXP. We're streaming live video at kexp.org. That was absolutely beautiful. I think we were all holding our breath. <laughs> Bill, you brought up a wonderful point that Woody was a folk singer who employed traditional melodies and old folk songs and wrote new songs from them, often on a topical nature, and you could really hear that on the Ramblin' Around song specifically. Yeah. And they were often on a topical nature, as I mentioned, and this series of songs that we're celebrating right now, the 26 Songs in 30 Days, about the huge public works project on the Columbia River, and it would benefit so many people, which I think is what interested Woody, and that was kind of a theme in his music. You can really feel it even in the instrumental version of that. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's wild. Those melodies are so much, you know, they're just in our blood somehow. Um, from coming from him and and back further and further and further. So, I bet if you asked every person what role Woody Guthrie's music played in their life, you'd just get so many different stories. Well, there was well, there was a time. I mean, if you were wanting to learn how to play guitar, there was. You know, from my generation, it was just like you didn't get an electric right away. You know, Pops wasn't going to go for that. You know, it's like you got an acoustic guitar and those are the songs you I mean, that's that's most of the songbooks and stuff that were out there. You, that's what you learned. You learned your G's, your C's and your D's by playing those melodies. It was just a part of the canon. I mean, that was it was that was as normal to me as the Pledge of Allegiance or anything else. It was just that was it. Even just in the renditions we've heard today, you've interpreted the music um, also differently. And as musicians, would you say that the songs themselves are very simple and easy for people to play? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, there's no question about it, right? I mean, they're so open for any sort of interpretation. That's what that's what we elected to do. So they're very approachable, which is, I'm not yeah. a musician, but it seems like that's I'm an, just another layer. I'm trying to think of anyone else other than the jazz greats or something where you're allowed to do that. You know, it's just like, well, I'm going to take this monk tune and I'm just going to do what I want to it, you know? Right. What he's like that. And that's, I mean, that's the, the basis of folk music. Mm -hmm. It's for folks. You know, sitting around a campfire or at home or whatever. And, you know, I mean, <clears throat> that passage of plenty which I'm going to do a version a more traditional version of it because um, this was one that was written for this project uh, he doesn't seem to care whether he's the melody is going with the chord changes yeah yeah it's just he stays on one chord and <clears throat> and the melody just does what it's going to do and and uh, too bad <laughs> uh, he's if just you don't like report. it you know and then <clears throat> and then he'll just throw in he's really, uh, he was always really casual about recording or what version. I mean, there's not a, a full version of This Land is Your Land. There's all these other verses mm -hmm. that were never recorded, you know? And, and, uh, and on this one, he just kind of throws in <clears throat> a chord haphazardly at the end of the, of the last two verses. And, and it's kind of, how, how do you do that? You just, oh, you just do that and didn't seem to care. But it's also, for me, deceptively, you know, I spent years, oh, yeah, it's just three chords, or it's just, you know, people say that, but <clears throat> wait a minute, then when I try to actually play, you know, I for me, he was an awesome guitar player, and, you know, you can really hear the how he got from Mother Maybell Carter, he can do that stuff, you know, and it, for me, he's kind of a like a virtuoso in a but 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 it's not exclusive of you know it wasn't about showing off it was about bringing people into it um, well as you said i mean he knew what he was doing but it's so nice that the music is so approachable and that is so yeah. fitting to who what he was because I can't imagine just anyone doing what you just did there. That to was that some rendition. wizardry stuff. That right? was. He that is. Was Bill Frizzell is a wizard. Conjuring weird, I don't know. <laughs> no, it took us someplace, that's for sure. Well, John, it's a pleasure to have you here. We're lucky to have you in town. You actually have a great new album out, and we're going to have you back to talk about that next month. And you're in town. Appreciate you have a book. Yeah. Um, all kinds of stuff. I know. So you're busy. So we'll have you back next month to talk more about that. But since you set up that song, Pastors of Plenty, so uh, let's hear what you have to say about Woody Guthrie on that guitar. Uh, well, like Gerald, um, they just said, here's the songs, and I picked this one. 
um, I think it's kind of fitting that, that we go from uh, like the, the year 2050, which <laughs> <laughs> Bill Frizzell so nicely transported us to, and then we'll go back to 1940, we'll say 42, because this is a little different. Um, but you know, the, the, my experience with Woody Guthrie was, was uh, it's what was given to kids as, uh, as our music in, in my generation, you know, in the early 60s, kids listened to folk music. And, and adults didn't see it. Maybe they knew, but maybe they didn't really care. But it was all about, you know, Lead Belly, who was, you know, in jail for murder, and Woody Guthrie, who was a socialist, and Cisco Houston, who was, you know, had this crazy adventuring life. And, and um, here are kids, listen to this. And, and it, was, uh, it was all, it, it really shaped my songwriting. Um, because of all the images and, and just strange goings on and, and stories and everything like that. So um, anyway, maybe I should just get to the song and quit rambling around. <laughs> <clears throat> We're and enjoying Bill, a little of both. If you would uh, join me, and, and you can place, I'll, I'll leave a little space there it's in the middle somewhere, and you can play some fun stuff. And cool. here's, the, here's the more traditional version of this song. It's a mighty hard road that my poor hand is hold. My poor feet have traveled a hard, dusty road. Out of your dust bowl and wester we rolled. Your desert was hot and your mountains was cold. I worked in your orchards of peaches and prunes Slept on the ground in the light of your moon On the edge of your cities you'll see us and then We come with the dust and we go with the wind California and Arizona, I make all your crops And it's north up to Oregon to gather your hops Dig your beets from the ground, cut the grapes from your vine To set on your table your light sparkling wine Pastures of plenty from dry desert ground, from the Grand Coulee Dam where the waters run down. Every state in the Union, us migrants have been. We'll work in this fight and we'll fight till we win. Well, as always. We ramble that river and I All along that green valley I'll work till I die My land I'll defend with my life if it be Cause my pastures of plenty must always be free That was wonderful. I'm so glad you did those two renditions back to back. John yeah. Doe and Bill Frizzell live on KEXP. I want to thank you all so much for coming in today. It's been such a pleasure. What a treat to be in Thanks this room with so much talent. And tomorrow night, you're all playing at Benaroya Hall. More songs of Woody Guthrie, and you'll be joined by Sarah Cahoon, Shelby Earl, Ian Moore is going to be there, Dave Alvin, Tim Easton. Hopefully I haven't missed anyone. That sounds like an incredible evening. Sure. And playing more songs of Woody Guthrie. And that actually is a benefit for the Woody Guthrie Center and SMASH, which is Seattle Musicians Access to Sustainable Healthcare. So, well, that's uh, a mouthful, isn't it? That is a mouthful. <laughs> no wonder they call themselves SMASH. 
but great music for a great cause. And wow, again, so humbled to be in the room with these wonderful musicians today. Thank you all for taking time to come by. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for having us. It's Gerald Collier, Bill Frizzell, John Doe, and company live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.